The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Ready to rock and roll here? Hey, just wanted to thank everybody for joining us here tonight. Um, myself and Dr. Bart Silverman are going to be going over the Chrome Guided Smile instructions uh, slash system. Uh, something that uh, when Bart and I have been instructing some of the live surgical classes uh, here at Implant Pathway, we'll get asked uh, a lot about guided surgery for full, full arch cases. Um, so how do you take uh, a patient that is, um, how do you take a patient from, let's say, removable? Um, so potentially you've gone, gone back to your office, uh, you've done some full arch cases, uh, you feel comfortable maybe with uh, some overdentures, but that next step as far as for uh, full arch uh, guided fixed prosthetics, um, how do you go about tackling that? I know that when I did my first uh, few arches uh, fully guided immediate load, there was a huge learning curve. Um, and I think something that uh, Dr. Silver and myself would like to do is help other people have a better first experience with, with a system like Chrome. Um, if you get started off on the wrong foot, it can potentially have a negative effect where you don't end up liking the procedure. And patients will come in and they'll ask you about it. And because of that negative first experience, you may start, um, Kind of leading the patient down a different path or potentially just send it out of your office. Uh, so what we're trying to do is set up a program, a, a live surgical program where you, uh, the doctor attendees, are going to bring your patient here, complete the surgery, um, and finish the prosthetic back in your office to, to help you give you more confidence as far as how the entire workflow would, would go, treatment planning, even if you decide that uh, this isn't something as far as from start to finish that you want to tackle, uh, it's something that you can have a very educated conversation with the patients about and potentially bring in a surgeon uh, to your office to do that and, and you can do the conversion and um, you can keep that revenue and that patient in your practice. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to kick this over to Dr. Silverman and he's going to run through a presentation and then uh, we can go through questions at the end. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Thanks so much. So I guess we're switching over now, and I think you – can everybody see our slides yet? Uh, almost there. Okay. And you probably – okay, excellent. All right, so, Chris, thanks so much for the introduction there. That's perfect. So, um, yeah, so I think it's going to be an exciting course that we're putting together, myself and Dr. Barrett and Implant Pathways. So. What we're going to be talking about tonight is we're just going to go through a little webinar about, you know, the difference between our full arch courses that, that, that we're going to put on for you guys and the other full arch courses that are around the country is that we're going to be doing a guided full arch. And uh, we're lucky enough to partner up with Implant Pathways. And uh, let's get on with the webinar. Okay, so as far as partnerships go is we're going to be doing – a biohorizon implant system and we partnered up with the chrome laboratory technique and we're going to be working with road dental labs out in ohio and we're going to explain this tonight we'll talk about the, the cases as we go along yeah okay so the course objectives is that but we want everybody to understand who takes the course is we're going to go through all the factors necessary for a full arch guided surgical immediate placement and immediate load technique. What we'd like you guys to be able to do is at the end of the course, and by the way, this is going to be a two-day session. So I think there's, there's no other courses like this that, that has been given in the United States so far. And um, it, it's really, I, I think it's really well done. It's really well thought out. It's put together pretty nicely. So it's going to be a two-day course. The first day is going to be full of didactics. And we're going to reinforce the didactics with hands-on. And by the end of the first day, you'll be able to treatment plan a fully edentulous maxillar or mandible, starting with either partially edentulous or a terminal dentition. And on the second day, what we're going to do is the participants are going to be able to bring their patients um, to, to Arizona, and they're going to do a live surgery on their own patients using you know, the chrome light layered guided surgical technique with biohorizons implant. What we're also going to do, too, is that it's not only going to be bring your patient in, place the implants, and send them home. We're also going to talk about the step step conversion of the complete denture into a fixed provisional acrylic prosthesis 
as well as talk about, okay, once the implants are in, once the prosthesis is in, three months down the road when the implants integrate, we're gonna talk about how do you take that final impression as well? What do you do next and the next steps? And how do you get to the final restoration? All right, so this is Frank. And uh, Frank didn't always start to look like this. Frank, Frank actually presented to our, court, our office looking like this. But during the two day course that we're gonna have in Arizona, we're gonna be able to take Frank from here to here. All right, so we're gonna talk about doing a, a biomechanically stable, immediate load and functional protocol, starting with a partially edentulous or fully edentulous patient. And our guided surgical solution is gonna create, create a stable and predictable pre-planned option for this protocol. And I think that's what makes our course different than most other courses. This is gonna be a pre-planned guided surgical option. Okay, so why is this important? Well, we find in our, in our office that we do get a lot of patients who are edentulous, and this is kind of interesting. By the year of 2020, they feel it's almost, there's almost gonna be 40 million edentulous Americans uh, around the country. And the interesting thing is, is that your initial impression of this is, that, oh, it must be some poor people, some indigent people, and it's not true at all. A majority of these patients are pretty much middle class, upper middle class, and they're just kind of afraid of dentists, and they just let their dentition deteriorate. So if somebody presents to us with a terminal dentition or a dentalist um, situation, we have several options for those patients. One is we could do a complete denture, which is pretty cost effective, but it's not really the best option we feel as dentists. We can do a locator option. We can put some parallel implants and maybe we have to do some bone grafting, some onlay grafting, some sinus grafting, which takes a long time, really tends to run up the cost. Or we can do an all on X case, maybe place four to five or six implants, maybe put some tilted implants in there, and kind of get this patient on a fixed sort of uh, pathway. And we like the screw retain hybrid because it allows the patient to function immediately, immediately gives them teeth. We like to do this tilted implant guided surgical approach because a lot of times it obviates the need for bone grafting. We can reduce the course for our patients not having to go through all, all these bone grafting procedures as well. The thing that we love is that being able to provide a fixed solution for our patients on the day of surgery. And it just gives the patients improved satisfaction in regards to function, aesthetics, speech, and self-esteem. It's really nice to be able to take their teeth out and place new teeth and let them go home and function that same night. And um, with our approach, which is different than most approaches around the country, is that we're going to do a guided surgical approach. We're going to teach everybody how to do a guided surgical pre-planned approach to give us a very predictable result. So these are the type of patients we'll be able to see in our practice. This is Ken. So Ken started out like this, and we were able to provide a nice solution for Ken. This is Mora. Mora came to us looking like this, and this is what Mora left our practice looking like. So this is basically what the procedure is like. Patient comes in, takes some teeth out, we might have to level out some bones. We're gonna place our four to six implants, place these, place these multi-unit or connectors, and then take the denture and convert it right down to a fixed prosthesis. And our, our approach is gonna be through what we call the Teeth Express BioHorizons approach. All right, so once again, patients come in, we place the implants through our pre-planned, prefabricated surgical guided surgical guide. We're gonna place the multi-unit abutments place the titanium copings, the impression copings, create a provisional denture and create some immediate load. And uh, we, we really think that this patient really does, this particular procedure really does the patient a lot of service. We find that it's a, it's a lot faster procedure. We find that a lot of times that the grafting is not necessary and we tend to keep the cost down low. All right, so when we're talking about our course versus other courses, there's two different ways to approach this situation. One would be if we do a freehand approach. In these type of freehand approaches, we kind of do a panorex x-ray. We kind of get an idea of what, how we're going to plan this out. They usually require big flaps. We'll place our implants. A lot of times the implants are placed just on the fly. In the event that sometimes we could place the implants by sinuses, we might have to do some additional bone grafting, which takes a little bit more time and increases the cost. As compared to um, our technique, where we're most of the time we're going to place our implants flapless if bone reduction is not necessary. We're going to do a lot of pre-planning in our particular course. We're going to teach you guys how to uh, do some planning with the three-dimensional software that we're going to use. And through our three-dimensional software, we can actually place these implants where they need to go prosthetically and give the patient that much more effective restoration. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to teach everybody how to make a surgical guide, how to plan the cases to make, our, make these cases a lot safer and more efficient for our patients. And once again, the guide that we're going to pre-plan allows us to place our dental implants where they need to be prosthetically. 
to give us that long-term success. So we're going to teach you not how to do this. So this is actually a video that I pulled off on the internet. And this is by a, a pretty well-known uh, dentist who does a lot of these cases and a lot of these courses. And this is typically what it is. You tend to make a big open flap and you tend to be hunting around for some bone. And you can see over here on the upper right-hand side, he pretty much finds a good spot. But, and over here, I'll probably go back and redefine that spot again because that seems to work pretty well. But you know, he's kind of just hunting around here. And here it looks like a nice, whoop, whoop, oy. That switch slips off the bone there, but don't worry, that's okay. We can repair that little piece of bone there, but let's keep going. You know what? That back implant osteotomy seems to work well. Let's redefine that again a couple more times. But I guess we need an anterior approach here. So let's go over here. It looks like the foramen. Wait, let's just pull off that bone again. So it's really haphazardly placed. There's no planning. There's no planning involved. And we can go on in this video. And we get a nice result like this. Or we can use that guided surgical placement that we're going to see. And in our particular procedure, we're going to do a cone beam scan. We're going to pre-plan out a dent to where the teeth need to be, and then place the implants based upon where the teeth need to be in function. Place their implants and hopefully be able to restore that patient the same day until full function. Okay, so let's go through our protocol for a second for our course. What we're going to do first off is let's talk about patient selection. And this is what we would like you guys and gals to start looking for. Look for a patient that presents to you pretty much in a fully edentulous patient or a terminal dentition. Pretty much several teeth that just hopeless prognosis. So let me show you what we tend to look for. So let's look for maybe a patient that has severe periodontal disease, maybe somebody that presents to you with gross, non-restorable, carious teeth, completely edentulous patients we're going to look for, terminal dentitions, dentitions that just are on full, terrible repair, or a patient that comes to us that just can't wear a full or partial denture. So let me just show you a couple pictures. Look at these panorexes, and as you look at these panorexes for cases that we've done, they all tend to look kind of similar. Whether it's a fully edentulous case or a partially edentulous case, there's some teeth that really are pretty much hopeless. And these are the kind of cases that Chris and I would like you to look for and like you to send us as well. The patients maybe who can't wear full dentures, they just had a tough time with wearing partial dentures, They've worn a couple of partial dentures. The teeth tend to be breaking down. These are the type of cases we want to look for. Now, looking at these x-rays, they're kind of resembling themselves. Don't they kind of resemble each other? They're all that same type of patient. And this is what we want you guys to find and gals to find for us. These are the type of cases we're going to learn how to treatment plan and plan out. Okay. Now... <laughs> Who can help us find these cases? Well, you know, us as dentists, when we see our patients in our practices, we can start seeing our patients. We can start thinking about our patients, the patients that we know that just can't get used to dentures, patients that are coming in and they're you're kind of doing one tooth at a time, kind of repairing it, taking it out, repairing another tooth, taking it out, adding it to a partial, adding it to another partial, severe periodontal disease. These are the type of patients that we want to find. So we can see them when the patients come to our offices and our clinic, but we also want to educate our hygienists to look for the same type of patient. If you're a specialist and you're looking to do more of these cases, it's really good for you to educate your referring doctors about what type of patients that are really going to really be pretty good and qualify for these type of cases. And of course, social media. Okay, so what else do we do? We, we talked about what kind of cases we're going to look for. The next thing we're going to do is evaluate a medical history. And then we're going to assess this patient's smile line, and gingival exposure. This is really, really important. What we'd like you to do is we're going to go over a couple of photos that we need you all to take and send to us, but it's really important to evaluate the patient's smile line. You want to have that patient smile as big as they possibly can. Sometimes we have the patient say, hey, give me a big snarl if you can. Laugh as loud as you possibly, as hard as you possibly can, and take that picture. We want to see where that upper lip hits in reference to the adjacent teeth and adjacent mucosa. And this is a very important point because we have to make sure that our transition line, when we do insert our prosthesis, the area where that prosthesis touches the gingival mucosa, we call that the transition line, has to be above a smile line. Because the worst thing, one of the worst things on terrible diagnoses is I've done when patients come in and we don't have enough vertical taken into account. And when they do smile, you see that transition line. But we're going to teach you all in the course how to pre-plan that and how to prepare for that so you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, next. The other thing we want you to do is that it's really important, once again, to diagnose the proper cases. 
you'd like to, and we'll show you the photo in a second, have the patient turn to the side, almost like a little cephalometric set, view. In your mind's eye, we want you to draw a line. We'd like you to draw a line from the top of the external auditory mass, the top of the ear canal, all the way across to the bottom part of the eye, and then drop a perpendicular line right down to the base of the nose, through the anterior nasal spine. Now, the upper jaw, the upper lip is upper jaw, should extend out anterior to that about one to two millimeters. And of course, the mandible should extend inferior to that, inside of that, one to two millimeters. Now, if your maxilla doesn't extend out one to two millimeters from that line that we just joined, that perpendicular line from the Frankfurt horizontal plane, and it's too far back, it's too far retronathic, we'll say, then many times that this fixed prosthesis case is not the proper case not the proper design for that particular patient. Maybe we need a bar overdention. Maybe we need, we, we, we need to rely upon the prosthesis itself to pull out that upper lip and give the patient the look that they need. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take some uh, Panorex radiograph. And I want you all to look at the Panorex radiograph. Try to assess the bone. We want you on these first couple of cases, like Chris mentioned, we want to set you up for success. We want to give you a great experience. So you feel good about this procedure, and you go on and keep doing this and help a lot of patients along the way. So whether you're looking at the mandible, or whether you're looking at the maxilla, whether you're looking at between the mental foramen, or if you're looking between the canines, try to get a, a good amount of bone. Try to get a good thickness of bone, maybe five or six millimeters if you can, minimum, and maybe as far as height goes, maybe about 10 to 12 millimeters of height. And these are the type of cases that will set you guys all up for success. Okay, we're also going to ask you to do some impressions, mount the models, upper and lower. If you have to do base plates, do base plates. If you have to do face bows, please do face bows. And then we're going to do, once we get everything lined up, we're going to go to the final restoration. We're going to go to the end result. We're going to do a laboratory wax up. We're going to see that final result. That final result is what we need to achieve. Once we know what the final result needs to look like, we're going to be able to place our implants so they line up exactly where those teeth need to be placed for our patients. Once again, it's not a haphazard type of open up a flap and place our implants wherever we think we, think we have some bone. We're gonna ask you all to send them some photographs too. We'd like a photograph with the patient on face straight on, which is lips relaxed and, and repose. And once again, that high smile on picture, as high as they sm possibly can smile, big snarl, big laughing, and get a picture of that as well. We'll ask you for a lateral view, and here you can see if that max slur is in a nice place or it's not too retronathic as well. Okay, so now, as far as protocol goes, what we want you to do on a totally edentulous patient is the first thing we need to do is we need to make the best set, the ideal set of dentures we can. Once again, remember, we're going to go to the final result first, and we need to achieve the best possible result. So if the patient presents to us with a set of dentures, we're going to evaluate that set of dentures. We'll evaluate the vertical. We'll evaluate the setup, the aesthetics, the phonetics, and function. And if that denture is the ideal denture, we'll use that denture as the final plan for our immediate fixed case. If the patient, if that doesn't qualify, if the patient comes to us and doesn't have a full denture, then what we're going to do at that point is we're going to fabricate a full denture. And we're going to make sure that that denture is the ideal denture for our patient. And once again, the best, the best aesthetics and aesthetics that we can. That will be our final result that we go to achieve. And that's a totally edentulous patient. Now, if a patient of ours is a partially edentulous patient, somewhere with partially edentulous, maybe a terminal dentition, what we'd like you to do is think in terms of getting a foam beam scan to us and also take an impression, an upper and lower impression and a bite and send those those models on to us too. Chris and I will let you know if you're going to send it to us or directly to Roe. We'll let you know that in the future. We could do an analog impression, a, ready, a regular uh, TV uh, impression, or we can do a digital impression. Now, once we have as much prosthetic information as possible, we're going to send these cases on over to Roe Dental Labs they're going to import the cone beam scan. They're going to import the digital or STL models, or the actual models that we send them, into an implant planning software, and they're going to start planning our cases. Chris and I will get on a webinar with you guys. We'll, we'll pre-plan. We'll go through this pre-plan webinar. We'll pre-plan out our cases. We'll probably wind up doing it at the course as well. Or you're going to be able to take a patient who presents like this, have them do a cone beam scan, take either a digital or analog model and send it off to Row Dental Labs and we're going to plan it out. And that's on a partially edentulous patient. Now, if it's a fully edentulous patient, what we're going to do then, we're going to take that ideal denture that we just created for that patient and we're going to do what's called a dual scan. And what a dual scan is, we're going to take the patient's denture, 
We're going to have you put some sure mark stickers on there. We'll get this to you as well. You're going to put three on the buckle, stagger the heights. We don't want to see them along the same height, and three on the powder. Once again, don't make sure they don't overlap the, the buckle ones when you're looking at it straight on. You're going to put the denture inside the patient's mouth, and you're going to sp scan the patient with the denture in place. Then you're going to take the denture out of the patient's mouth and scan the denture by itself in your comb vein machine, hence the dual scan. You're going to send both digital files on over the row. I'm going to plan the case for the same matter. Okay, so what Row is going to do is they're going to take all the information that we send them, we place all that information in an in a, um, implant planning software, they'll do a digital smile design, and prosthetically plan this case based upon the final relation, uh, restoration that we pre-send them. Okay, let's take a couple more minutes to look at the case and we'll finish up. So this is um, Loretta. We're going to take some photos on Loretta. We're going to take a, a, a full face shot, regular lips and repose, and a big, big smile shot. We're going to take a lateral face shot as well. Intraoral pictures, we'll have you guys take the same thing, a nice smile shot. Full pictures of maximum intercuspation. We'll ask you straight on and lateral on both sides. We get an upper and a lower picture as well. Then we're going to take the models, as we said, or the digital scan or the dual scan protocol. We're going to import that into an implant planning software and plan the implants that need to go prosthetically so we can set up the best function for our patient. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get this back from row. So this is going to be the prosthetics. This is going to be the, uh, the, um, the trays and the equipment that we're going to get back from row. Okay, what we're gonna do on the first day is we're gonna review all this, the, the didactics. We're gonna have you guys practice this all on models so you feel very comfortable with this pr procedure before we actually do it, take our patients to live surgery the second day. On the second day, we'll, uh, you know, the pain consent, some local anesthesia. And what we'll do is we'll start the process. We're gonna make a full open flap, buckle, and on the palatal. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna seat the tooth positioning guide with the foundation guide in place. I'm going to place these stabilization pins that you see up top on the foundation guide. Now, the whole process, this whole guided surgical layered technique that we're going to teach you all really functions on properly positioning this foundation guide where it needs to go. And everything that once that's preset and stabilized in the patient's upper jaw or lower jaw, that's going to be our foundation. Every single prosthesis that we use, every single step is going to function off this foundation guide. We're going to remove the tooth positioning guide. We're going to extract the teeth. We're going to remove the extra bone. We're going to perform an alveoloplasty, take it right down to the level of that foundation guide. And then we're going to place our implant placement guide. And once again, the implant placement guide, just like the tooth positioning guide, it all tends to key into our foundation guide with these little Swiss locks that we see up top. And we'll teach you all this, of course, in the, in the, uh, the first day, the um, day before. Okay, once we place our the teeth positioning guide, our implant guide. We're going to start placing our implants right through that guide. And this whole protocol will teach you the protocol. Once the implants are placed, we're going to remove our implant placement guide, and we're going to place the multi-unit abutments. The multi-unit abutments are actually the abutments, which are the connectors that connect inside the implants that we place. Now, sometimes in this protocol, we're going to plant implants that go axially, and sometimes we're going to plant implants that tend to be tilted. What we do with the multi-unit abutments is we take these tilted implants and we kind of redirect the forces axially because we know the implants can handle forces axially and not tilted. Once all the forces are redirected axially through the placement of our multi-unit abutments, what we're going to do is we're going to place these titanium copings, once again, through the gasket which goes into our foundation guide. Once that's done, we're going to take our pre-milled denture, which has our holes already pre-milled out, and seat that on top of our impression copings. I'm going to use this to actually do a denture pickup. We're going to pick up the denture, polish out the uh, remaining teeth. We're going to remove the foundation guide. I'm going to place our fixed prosthesis on top of the multi-unit abutments through some prosthetic screws after we suture our wounds. We're going to fill up the access holes with some gutter purchase, some cabinet, whatever we choose to use. And we're going to see our patient in a couple days to adjust the occlusion. We're gonna go through also during our course what to do day one, day week, a week later, a month, a month later, three months later, and once again at the final restoration, how to take that final restoration.
impression. Okay, and there's Loretta. All right, so we're really excited. We're really excited to have you guys join our case, our course, and uh, we'll be able to, uh, through our, our two-day course with you all, we'll be able to uh, take our patients like Margaret from here to here. So Chris, I'm gonna turn it back to you now, and then uh, we can entertain some questions and finish on up. Yeah, Bart, that was fantastic. Thanks for going through that with everybody. Um, a couple key points that I wanna uh, make those cases that you're just showing it makes it look so easy almost like the guide is just doing doing it for you and um when it goes when it goes really smoothly it's fantastic if there's if something starts going sideways um all of a sudden it doesn't become so easy anymore and i think that's one of the things that is motivating me to to put a course on like this is that let me and bart show you guys and gals that um there's a few things that after after you've done the system a few times, it's like, oh, okay, yep, I see this coming, or I, I've got to reduce here, or the Swiss lock wasn't pinned in, or just some little nuances to the system that after you've done it a few times becomes, becomes quite a bit easier. Um, when I was looking around a few years ago for a course like this, there wasn't anything in the US. You had to go to Mexico or the Dominican, and one of the issues that I had was that there's no um, follow-up as far as on the restorative side of things. So just as important it is to, um, uh, to do the proper diagnosis and treatment planning and then execution of the surgery, um, if you don't get to go through the steps of um, how to take the final impression, how are you relaying um, the information that you're finding um, four months later, to, to get to that that final that everybody's happy with, then you're kind of just left in this this gray area and it, it kind of feels like you're walking through mud. So having the ability to find a patient that you're comfortable with, that trusts you, that, um, that can come down to the course, help financially um, support you with this. We all have patients that can afford removable that want fixed and for probably a removable fee, they can get this done. Um, but the advantage of taking them back to your office and going through those steps and having us guide you along the way is, is so important at the beginning of this. Um, all of the surgical and prosthetics uh, are gonna be included minus the final prosthetic. Uh, and then a couple things like the impression copings, um, you know, four months later. Uh, otherwise, it'll all be provided here. Um, we're going to limit this to four attendees. So we're going to have uh, basically me and, and, and Bart take each take a room, and we're going to flip uh, morning and afternoon as far as the surgery days. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, this goes as smoothly as possible. So we want a lot of attention to, to everybody that's taking the course. Uh, it's going to be a single arch. So none of these are going to be a, a double arch type of case. So either uh, your patient needs an upper or a lower. Um, you know, guided a lot of times is uh, marketed as almost like a brainless thing where you put the guide in, you go through the steps and voila, you get this outcome at the end. And I think something that uh, is gonna be really nice is for us to show you guys that you still need to be thinking through exactly what you're doing at each step, going through a checklist of, okay, we've got this accomplished, we've got this accomplished. Um, before moving on, before moving on to the next thing, um, you know, I'm really excited to potentially uh, get get a small group of people to work with um, to to kind of help them take them to the next level and be able to offer some some really fantastic uh, implant dentistry in their offices. Um, Bart, do you have any have any follow up on that? No, no, no. That's perfect, Chris. I'm glad you went through the uh, the details of the course as well. No, no. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's, I think we should probably, uh, open it up to any questions, um, that anybody might have. Um, you know, it was funny, the, the very first time that, um, that I was involved with something like this, I had to fly, uh, two or three states away to go find someone doing the surgery. Um, and then basically took a day out of the office. Maybe it was a day and a half, potentially two days. I can't remember now, but, um, just to go shadow someone that would allow me to kind of watch it um, versus having the ability to take a course like this.
Bart, I've, Bart, I've got a question for you. Um, when you're doing these types of cases, do you, um, as far as from a prosthetic standpoint, do you prefer to use the same size of implant throughout the entire case as far as um, trying to keep the prosthetics to a minimum? Uh, that's a great question, Chris. Thanks for asking that one too. Um, so yeah, so what I try to do is um, we, we tend to treatment plan these cases with usually like using a 3.8 implant. That's why I like the BioHorizon system so much. That tends to be our workhorse for our implants on these particular full arch cases. We like the 3.8 because it gives us a big chance that we get enough bone around that implant. And if in the, in the, if in the event that, say, the 3.8 tends to be, maybe the patient's bone is a little soft in an area or two, what's nice about the BioHorizon system is, is that we can actually jump to the next size up, the 4.6, or two sizes up, the 4.6, and that tends to platform switch down to a 3.8. So they both get the same 3.5 fixture prosthetic platform. So it tends to, it, it, what we like about this particular system is that myself and my referring base is that we don't have to keep a tremendous amount of inventory on stock. So most of our implants are either 3.8 and we keep the occasional 4.6 with platforms down and all our prosthetics fit for the 3.5 platform. And we'll teach this technique as well. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I find myself doing the same thing. Um, we've got a question here from Tyler. What aspects of the Chrome system do you guys prefer to other guided systems? Um, so uh, the other guided systems that I've used uh, as far as for a dentate type or um, let me take a step back. The other guided systems that I've used that have been some sort of uh, set reference system. So um, all of them have kind of their own little proprietary ways of doing this. Uh, you have um, 360 imaging, that's a bone-borne uh, type of uh, reference point. You have um, Chrome, you have in sequence. You know, Chrome is kind of like a floating bar. Um, in sequence is a little bit different than that. That's something where of the three systems, I found Chrome to be, uh, have a couple advantages. One, it's relatively um, uh, non-invasive as far as the amount of hardware that's going to go in. It doesn't have to wrap onto the palate. It's just on the facial. Uh, it's a floating bar, uh, which means that you can get irrigation up underneath it. And it also gives you pretty good visualization of uh, your osteotomies of your reduction. Um, the other thing with the, the 360 imaging, I actually liked that system quite a bit when I used it, but it was also quite a bit more expensive. Um, and I didn't see the advantage as far as monetarily to invest more into that system than, than with Chrome. Um, Bart, I'm not sure if you want to also give your two cents on that. No, no, I, I, I agree also. I, I've tried just about every system that's on the market from end sequence down to 360 to Chrome to Anatomy. Yeah, I the same. And I find the same thing. I think that your uh, appraisal of the system is spot on with mine, too. I agree. We also have another question that came in, uh, came in privately. We have another question that says um, that one, one person asked about uh, during the course, we'll be going through the coding, the step by step coding, and um, through the uh, surgical part and the, and the laboratory uh, steps. Um, we, we can definitely discuss the coding that we use in our practices as well during that course, sure. And I guess the question might be, you know, can you bring your office manager along, or is that something that you can just take the information back to your office? And of course, you, yes, you could do either of the two. We find that most of the doctors that do take some of the courses that I usually run, they tend to take the information back to their practices and share it with your office manager. Yeah, and the other thing too is that um, I would encourage everybody to bring their main surgical assistant that they're going to be using. Um, so that they're not trying to re-explain what we're doing. It's um, just the visuals and the hands-on and, and going through it so that they can have everything set up for you and uh, going through that, that checklist, uh, just double and triple checking everything for you. Um, you know, as far as the coding and making sure that, um, that we have some sort of um, like general fees for everyone, that is a pretty, uh, I would say practice to practice thing. I, I think generally nationwide, you're probably looking at a full fixed arch on average somewhere around $25,000 um, for both the surgery and the prosthetic. Um, 
I've been a part of a number of different practices and they all do it differently as far as how they code it, how they get the reimbursement, if they're in network, if they're not in network, whether they have the patient pay everything up front or half down to start and then the remaining half before um, before the before the end of it when the final is delivered. Um, personally, um, I typically have the patients either it's a two-step thing where you're paying half of it up front and then the final payment is due before the final prosthetic goes in uh, or they're using third-party financing either through uh, proceed finance or care credit. Um, but again, as far as the coding goes, I don't have, um, I wouldn't say this is an insurance based class where we're going to be going through in detail as far as how to maximize coding to get reimbursement. And I certainly don't want uh, the attending docs to feel like uh, if I would say that they need to be very comfortable with their patient and that they're financially available to pay for the course, um, or at least maybe part of it. Uh, potentially the patient doesn't need to pay for any of it if it's the first course and you're just doing this as a learning aspect. But um, I don't think that's going to be heavily uh, influenced in the course, but we can certainly go over the topic and I'll be more than willing to share whatever uh, knowledge that I have to the specific questions. Yeah, and I, I'll, of course I'll, I would do exactly the same. You know, I, I think also, Chris, we should mention one more thing is, is that um, the the price for the course, the fee for the course, includes everything that you described before. And um, what we're also going to do too is, I think Roe is also going to give us some uh, discount coupons for the final prosthesis too, for the final restoration. So that that should be mentioned as well. Okay, fantastic. Um, I know when we were talking about setting up the fee for the course, and and um, I know as far as the sticker price, it, it may seem high. I will say that uh, if in every practice I've ever been in, there's always removable patients that want fixed that can't afford it. And with the cost of the implants, the cost with any sort of biologics, uh, the surgical guide costs, the conversion costs, the PMMA costs, um, if you could have the patient just supplement half of the course, you're basically um, kind of coming out ahead as far as being able to deliver these types of restorations in your office. So I'm hoping that doesn't uh, turn too many people away uh, as far as I really do think that's going to pack quite a bit of value, especially compared to if you're going to try to go take one of these other courses, uh, you'd have to sign up somewhere in Tijuana or the Dominican. So I'm seeing that we still have about 20 people, 20, 25 people uh, logged in here. Anyone else out there have any other questions? We're going to be going through uh, and doing a very similar webinar in about a month. Um, as soon as we have uh, the four attendees kind of locked in, we're going to be getting on some Skype calls, uh, going through, uh, doing some introductions helping you guys find uh, the right patients or reviewing the patients that you have that you think might be good candidates. Uh, we definitely want this to be a win-win-win for everybody. Uh, and we, we don't want you guys to feel like you're going to be going through this uh, alone and just showing up and, and seeing what happens. So we're going to be with you guys um, kind of along this little journey as far as patient selection, making sure that your records look good, getting them to row. Uh, we need to get that stuff uh, two row and back relatively soon as far as it typically takes somewhere between four and six weeks to get all of the uh, impressions and diagnostics and photos and smile simulation turned around so we have the full guided smile system. Uh, if there's any sort of hiccups where something needs to go back to lab then that can add another couple weeks so we want to make sure that we're getting really good information to the lab uh, first go around. Um, I think we're also, Bart, and you could you could touch on this as well. Um, I think we're looking for candidates uh, that want to take the course that have done some full arch, uh, that feel pretty comfortable surgically, that feel very comfortable laying flaps, taking out teeth, doing some bone plasty. Um, I would caution people uh, to jump right into this if uh, if you're if you're new to implant dentistry. Or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would totally agree. That's that's something that I think is really important. I think you're going to do yourself 
a disservice if you if you don't have the implant experience that you just described and you want to take this as one of your first full courses. Yeah, I definitely believe you should have several implants underneath your belt. Feel very comfortable with flaps. Feel very comfortable with uh, bone reduction. And uh, like you said, maybe you've tried a couple full arch cases already. You've done them freehand, we'll call it. Or maybe you've tried a couple guided cases as well. And maybe you just want to refine your technique. You maybe want to do a couple of cases with, uh, you know, one or two docks over your shoulder, seeing how you're doing it. And um, I think that's a really good point, Chris. I think another good point to mention, too, which you kind of touched on before, is that, uh, you know, it's, how, it's kind of cool in this particular course that we're actually having it in the United States. You don't have to travel overseas, and especially with some travel bans now from a couple of different countries from the United States government, probably a better idea would not to do that. So we're definitely local. With the, we're in the United States, which is good. And the other thing, too, is it's kind of neat. It's almost like an over-the-shoulder type of course. For the benefit of having maybe one or two surgeons who have experience with this, to be able to place your implants, maybe your first couple guided cases with somebody who's right next to you, holding the suction right there, and just kind of coaching you through, and, and showing you the, um, the ins and outs that we've experienced over, I'll say from my, from my camp, over 30, 30 years of experience with this full art stuff, and uh, just teaching the ins and outs. So we always say that you know, to have something like this is probably invaluable. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. We always say every particular implant has its own story. But now you have a couple of people who have done so many of these cases just right across the chair from you, kind of holding your hand almost in a sense of just guiding you through and telling you what to look for. What do we look for? You know, before you actually start making the, um, the mistakes that we made along the way. So I think that's another big plus for our particular course. Yeah, totally agree. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions, so um, maybe we can wrap this up. Um, Bart, thanks again for your time and for your presentation. Uh, if anybody has Thank any you. questions, um, you can contact Austin at Implant Pathway. Uh, you can contact me. You need to reach out on Instagram or Facebook. Um, certainly, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And then uh, Dr. Silverman and myself will be doing uh, basically the same thing again in about a month. Um, and then as soon as we get our docs signed up, we'll get we'll get ready to roll here. Fantastic. Chris, thanks again for letting me be a part of it. And thanks for being a part of it. And thank you for Implant Pathways also for helping us along the way in Road Dental Labs. And um, all right, we'll talk to you later. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.